What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Red Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create these vintage plant posters in Adobe Photoshop. Alright, so uh, full disclosure before we start the tutorial, you will need a plugin for this. Uh, it's called InkLab and it's made by Black Market. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get it. Um, but there are alternatives to uh, go with this technique, uh, but this just gives the best results. Alright, let's dive into it. All right, so I started out with taking a picture of a plant of mine that is in my apartment. So before you take the picture, uh, make sure that there is a white background uh, present. This way it's easier for you to cut out. Uh, I'm not going to show you how I cut it out because there are a million tutorials uh, on that on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I just cut it out and now we can use it for our vintage poster. All right, so let's duplicate this into a new document. All right, let's uh, leave it at the center here somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to go drag in my text here. Uh, so the fonts that I used are simply Helvetica and uh, Times New Roman. As you can see here. And I want to make the text a little bit smaller underneath. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make this picture look like it's an illustration as well as the text. Uh, and the way we can do that is by making this a smart object. And now we can freely use all the filters that are provided in Photoshop. I'm going to use the filter gallery here. And the first effect I'm going to use is under sketch graphic pen. And as you can see, it already looks like a, uh, like a uh, sketch. Um, yeah, the stroke direction, I went with left diagonal, uh, but yeah, you can use either. Uh, these are just the way the strokes are being uh, drawn. Uh, I like them when they're di diagonal. It makes it look a little bit more, uh, like authentic and human-like, I guess. The stroke length, I wouldn't let, I think make this too low. As you can see, it gets a little bit grainy. Yeah, you can play around with this. I think the longer they get, the kind of darker look it gets. Uh, more, it gets a little bit more contrast, I guess. Uh, I will leave it at somewhere in the middle uh, to keep like a lot of detail in here. Uh, and as with the light and dark balance, uh, this basically makes this uh, darker or lighter. Uh, and you want to make sure that it's not too, uh, too dark um, because otherwise you will leave a lot of color out of it later. Uh, so these settings work fine for me, so I'll just press OK. And what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go and duplicate the plan by pressing Command J or Control J on Windows. And we'll go back into the filter gallery here. And instead of the graphic pen, we'll go to artistic and we'll click the dry brush. As you can see, the dry brush, uh, without even like uh, editing these settings, it already gives up that painted look. Um, so we can use the brush size and the bigger it gets, uh, the more detail it like uh, kind of loses, I guess, because as you, as you can see down here, yeah, it gets a little bit too, too much, it looks a little bit too much like cut out in my opinion. So I want to keep the detail up and the brush size a little bit down. And as of texture, I don't really see like that much of a difference. Uh, it gives it a little bit more detail here, uh, but I actually don't really like that. So I'm just going to keep it low at one. And these settings work fine for me. So I'll press OK. Now you want to put the color plant. Uh, underneath the sketched blend. And you want to make this into a soft light blend mode. And this way, the brushes keep uh, stacking on top of each other, which gives off this pencil look, I guess. Uh, and it also like washes out the color just a little bit because it's uh, because the uh, top one is white. Uh, so for the text, we'll just convert this into a smart object as well. And we want to go to filter gallery and use the graphic pen here as well. Uh, but this time we want to make the dark balance a little bit higher so the text is a little bit better uh, in terms of readability. So basically we're, we're texturing uh, the text, I guess. Uh, we'll add a little bit of a displacement map. So you can use any like uh, photocopy displacement map. This one is one I made myself. If you want to make, learn how to make displacement maps, there is a video on my channel. Basically this roughens the edges up a little bit. I got this texture from Texture Fabric for free uh, and I will provide a link in the description. As you can see the edges are a bit jagged now and we want to soften it up a little bit by going to blur, box blur to simulate kind of an ink bleed. And we'll lower this to two, I guess. Yeah, this is fine. All right, so uh, here's the part where we are going to use a plugin called InkLab. Uh, and this is because this gives the best way to simulate a printing effect. So I'll bring up the plugin now. I already played the settings for a little bit. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to keep the mode to advanced, uh, the conversion to health tone screen, uh, the shape to ellipse, and the density at 10. Uh, you don't have to do anything with the channels, uh, but you can remove the background color here. 
And in the texture, we want to put the blend to high and we will use the um, dusty vintage paper or the, yeah, we'll use a dusty vintage paper. Also make sure before you run it, um, the advanced panel, the resample value, um, go to your image, to your uh, image size and check what your resolution is. So mine is 300 DPI. So I will keep this at 300. Otherwise it will resize your uh, file. So yeah, let's run it. All right, so I did some tests and uh, the settings worked out fine. Other, uh, the only thing I had to change was the density. So I put it to 29 and give this result. And as you can see, if we zoom in, uh, this is actually a halftone pattern with uh, all the different colored screens, uh, like how a usual print simulation goes. So this also gives some really interesting effects. So for example, when I remove the cyan, you'll get another style, but yeah, you get like a really highly detailed simulated print effect. And I want to give you an alternative for if you don't want to have, uh, so if you don't have the InkLab plugin, I'll uh, make this one invisible for you. You can just drag in a paper texture. I'm going to use one from the Dreadlabs web store. There will also be a link in the description for that. And as you can see, this is a dark gray uh, paper texture. So what we want to do is we want to make this a little bit war like warm yellow or orange. Uh, so we'll leave this color here. And now we want to make this a little bit lighter. So we'll get that, do that with a curves menu. And we'll make it light gray. All right, and we'll put the color to soft light. And as you can see, we now have a somewhat similar paper texture and we'll put that to the bottom here and the content here, the plant and the text, we'll call this content and we'll call this paper and under the content, we'll double click this. All right. So now if we drag this uh, left part here while holding other option, you will split these uh, like arrows into and the more you drag this in, the more it starts blending with the paper. And now we can fix the color in post. Uh, so what we want to do now is we'll bring in a solid color again. We'll make it like a warm orange or something like this. And we will experiment with the blend mode. Right, so I kind of like the color here if we wash it out a little bit more. Uh, but the thing is, I want to... Uh, leave the color of the plant, obviously. So I'm going to just select these. So the way you're going to select these is uh, by pressing control or command on Mac uh, on the thumbnail of your layer here. And you want to add more. So uh, now I'm pressing holding command and shift or control and shift on windows. And you will make a selection of all of these. And by holding alter option, I'm masking it out you'll actually leave the colors out of it. So now we can just uh, change the color of the paper without affecting the illustration here. Uh, all right, and there you have it. So uh, it's not really the same as the one in Inklab, as you can see. Um, I like this one way better, but yeah, I can, uh, I can imagine that not everyone can afford this plugin. So I want to give you a little bit of an alternative. Um, so all of the men uh, all of the packs, plugins, uh, things that I mentioned, link for that will be in the description. Uh, and with that out of the way, I want to thank my patrons for helping me out with the channel. Uh, thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to uh, to keep Dreadlabs up. So more patrons means more video content, more Dreadlabs, basically. So if you become a patron, uh, you'll get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, including this one. Uh, you'll get a 15% discount in Dreadlabs web store, and you'll also get a Discord role and an exclusive Discord channel. So yeah, thank you to my patrons. If you want to become one, there's a link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join us on Discord. And with all of that being said, I want to thank you for watching. This is Tom from Dreadlab signing off and I'll see you in the next video.